Um, okay, I hope you can all hear me uh, out there in, on MS Teams. Uh, my name is Peter Gray. I'm the director of the Institute of Irish Studies. My great pleasure to welcome you to this afternoon's Irish Studies Research Seminar. Uh, so we're uh, operating in hybrid formats uh, today. We have a, a group of people here in the room in the Institute of Irish Studies. Uh, Queen's with us and obviously uh, a lot of people out there uh, on MS Teams as well. Um, if you're joining us on Teams, just a reminder to keep your microphone turned off um, to avoid uh, us getting a bit of feedback. Uh, also, um, we are going to record this session, so if you don't want to appear on the recording, you just need to turn your camera off. Uh, there'll be an opportunity to uh, ask some questions uh, a bit later on. Um, but before we, we uh, do that, we're going to have a presentation. <laughs> so it's my great pleasure to welcome um, back to Queen's, uh, one of uh, someone who knows Queen's very well, uh, has spent uh, many, many years uh, researching and working here, Dr. Gordon Gillespie. Uh, Gordon uh, currently holds um, uh, a visiting scholarship or is a visiting scholar uh, in the Institute of Higher Studies uh, here at Queen's. He holds a, P he holds a PhD in politics, um, also from Queen's. Uh, and uh, is um, has published uh, and taught widely uh, in the history and politics of contemporary Northern Ireland. Uh, he's co-author of Northern Ireland, a Chronology of the Troubles, 1999, and the author of Years of Darkness, The Troubles Remembered, 2008, and um, A Short History of the Troubles, published in 2009, amongst many other uh, reports uh, and publications. Um, so uh, Gordon uh, has been working for a number of years uh, on a survey uh, of um, flags and other forms of cultural uh, representation uh, in, in East Belfast in particular. That's what he's going to talk to us about today. Um, just before we, we, we start, can people see Gordon's slides online? You, if you can see, perhaps someone could just tell me if you can see the slides. Yes, we can see them, Peter, thanks. That's great, thank you very much. Uh, so we'll pass over now to, to Gordon, who's going to give us a presentation, um, and then we'll have time for questions and answers. Okay, Gordon, okay, thanks, there you are. Okay. Okay, the spots with the mask for yeah, just uh, use that button there to move. Pretend not to be being for a minute. Uh, can I just click down on yeah. this one? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Peter all used already used my hopefully what I was trying to make a witty introduction is a um, choose life, choose a job, choose a career, choose a family, choose counting flags, as you and McGregor's renting in train spotting might well have said how they lived in Belfast. In 2004, I was working with Dominic Brown on a report on flags for the then Office of the First Minister and Deputy First Minister, which became Transforming Conflict, Flags and Emblems, published in March 2005. About this time in 2004, Dom gave me a copy of a survey of flags and roads and streets across Belfast, which had been conducted by Dr. Kate Ferrin in late July 2001. This was the year that large parts of Belfast had been covered in Ulster Volunteer Force and Ulster Defence Association flags, uh, like Tate's Avenue here in South Belfast. So we thought it might be interesting to try to replicate part of that survey by looking at the number, type and location of flags in some loyalist areas of Inner East Belfast. Uh, it was decided to do the survey on the day after the 12th parades, which would be when the greatest number of flags would be on display. I then continued this process in subsequent years. This meant that, depending on how the calendar fell, I conducted the survey on the 13th of July or the 14th of July if the 12th parades fell on if the 12th fell on the Sunday and the parades were held on Monday the 13th. In 2004, I covered the Newton Arch Road. Uh, Templemore Avenue, um, Albert Bridge Road and side streets covered by Kate Ferns survey, as well as D Street, Mersey Street and parts of the Bloomfield area. This took me two mornings to complete and in subsequent years I only covered the Newton Arch Road, Templemore Avenue and Albert Bridge Road, which 
setting out at about 6 a.m. in the morning, I could cover by about 9 to 10, uh, by which time more people were about, and sometimes giving me quite strange looks. Um, uh, interestingly, as a sideline, I've also noticed that whereas in the early years of the survey, there were few people around in the morning after the 12th, in more recent years, it seems more like an ordinary working day, which I think says something about change in society as well. Quite a few of the side streets have changed substantially over this period of time, for example, around the Mersey Street area, whereas the main thoroughfares have remained largely the same, and so we can get a more consistent run of counting like with like from one year to the next. A significant factor in what had instigated the um, renewed interest and concern in public popular displays of flags in the early 21st century was the finish physical manifestation of the UDA UVF feud of 2000 with UVF purple standard flags. That's the one on the top left. It's the, the kind of standard UVF one. And light blue, blue UDA flags. Uh, the uh, top left one again is the most common one. Although all of these things get varieties of them. Uh, the light blue UDA flag appearing in many loyalist areas of Belfast in 2001 and often in the same areas where the two paramilitary groups were in competition. This was apparent in Kate Farron's July 2001 survey when she found 21 UVF and Red Hand Commando flags with another uh, four young citizen volunteer flags uh, and 54 UDA flags on the Newton Arge Road, Alba Bridge Road and Tentmore Avenue alone. Now again, the, the, the YCV flag is an interesting one because um, you're, you're already getting into grey area here about is this a paramilitary flag or is it not a paramilitary flag? Um, clearly it's it's based on one that is a historic flag, but also the, the reality is that the Young Citizen Volunteers is the name given to the junior UVF. So, you're already into grey territory here about is this a paramilitary flag or not. Uh, for my purposes, I've, I've counted it as a paramilitary flag. Uh, by the time I did my first survey in July 2004, the number of what might be called overtly paramilitary flags had dropped dramatically to nine UVF or right hand commando and five YCV or 11 UDA uh, or UFF, Ulster Freedom Fighters. After 2001, uh, Union flags and Northern Ireland flags, which obviously people recognise, the Northern Ireland flag more uh, properly called the Ulster Banner. And remember, this doesn't have any official status, hasn't had official standing since 1972 uh, when Director Rule came in. But these two flags were by far the most common on display, and remain, this remained the case over the course of the following two decades. The Union flag was the most numerous flag on display every year apart from 2004. Uh, when the Union and Northern Ireland flags were jointly most common, and uh, 2013 when UVF flags were second most common, and this was the year of the UVF uh, centenary. Uh, uh, you can see there, I mean, the far greater numbers of Union flag, Union jacks, and Northern Ireland flags than the uh, paramilitary ones, even though people tend to focus on uh, paramilitary flags as, as the most controversial. But outside of that first year, as you can see, um, almost every year, the, the Union Jack and the Northern Ireland flag are by far the most uh, significant. Uh, I just stuck in these other ones by comparison. If we look at Scottish Saltar or, or Scottish Royal Standard flags, Again, they're, they're quite small in number, and, and the Scottish flags have actually been getting smaller in number. Um, the King William or Remember 1690 flags, again, almost no flags at all, which is you might find strange given that this is the 12th of July, commemorating the Battle of the Boyne and, and all that stuff. Uh, orange standard, i.e. flag, flag related to the Orange Order uh, and variations of it, again, um, relatively small numbers, it varies a wee bit from, from one to the other, but, you know, generally quite quite small in number, and a lot of those might be appearing on the um, Orange Hall on the Alba Bridge Road. Uh, there's the, the Orange Standard is the, the one on the top left. It's the most common one, but you also get um, variations of those as well if there's a, a, a comment, uh, an, an event being commemorated. Um, Kate Farron had only broken down the location of where flags were, were flown as either being on a, a lamppost uh, 
um, including presumably traffic lights or in a house or building. Uh, this, by the way, I'm just using as an illustration of how I think we older fogies would, would remember flags being flown. Um, you know, people would have got in the unionist community, got their Union Jack out or the Northern Ireland flag out, um, flown it over the, um, the, the period of the, the marching season, July and August, taken it down again and put, put it away. Uh, to be taken out again uh, the following year. Um, you can see actually there's a couple of um, black ribbons in that, so obviously someone associated with the houses has died there. But uh, for years, these flags appeared on Templemore Avenue, and it's only the last few years that, that they haven't appeared, presumably because the people who lived there have, have moved away. Um, now these are uh, flags on lampposts and traffic lights are, are generally the ones that are considered the most um, controversial, and this is just at the, the junction of D Street and the Newton Arch Road, and this is usually well uh, ticketed with, with flags, and you can see the UVF ones, uh, two there in that, in that um, image alone, on the traffic light, and, and uh, two traffic lights actually, and there are, there are more out of, out of shot there. Um, again, you know, you find a lot of flags on, on houses or buildings. A lot of these nowadays are um, ones that are put up for a year and then um, and then um, just taken down and not used again. <clears throat> Interestingly, just as a, as a footnote, uh, I sent this to a friend of mine in, um, who works over in England, and he said that um, his, his auntie used to live in that house, but she didn't have... Uh, UDA flags out when, when she was living there. Um, the other interesting point is his, his uncle was uh, Sam Thompson, the playwright, famously the Northern Ireland Labour Party activist. Uh, so it's strange that this house that his sister used to live in now has UDA flags flying outside it. Um, as I said, um, Kate Fern had only broken down the location flags as being either on lampposts or on a house or building. Um, uh, this was probably because she was covering a, a large area. Uh, but in 2004, I also counted flags at murals and at memorials as separate categories. And you can see here, the one on the left actually has uh, red hand commando flags. Uh, and for a lot of years, these were on this uh, memorial just at the side of the Newton Orange Road. The, these have disappeared again over the last few years as well. So there, there there's must have been a strategic decision taken to re remove them a few years ago. Uh, in 2005, then, um, I also added uh, flags on railings. These are uh, the flags at the Orange Hall, and again, those tend to change from, from one year to the next. The one on the top on, on the left is um, actually a flag of Ghana, because it's one of the two countries in Africa which has a orange laws, the other one being uh, Togo, I think. And then uh, we actually have a, a, an Anglican church in uh, Templemore Avenue, which has a Union flag flying on, on top of it. Um, these are flags which are flown bunting style. Um, one obviously in Clown Place and the other one in McMaster Street. Um, the interesting thing, I think, if you look at the one in Clown Place is where flags are not flying, which is the peace line uh, just at the back there. So that's facing onto uh, the National Story of the Short Strand. So clearly, uh, I'm guessing that there's been a deal done that there'd be no flags flying just at the top there where, where people in the short strand can see them. And again, um, 2013, there were flags. This is just at uh, Pitt Park, just uh, at the bottom of the Newton Arch Road where they had um, Union Jacks and uh, Northern Iron flags attached to the railing. <clears throat> and I haven't seen those um, over the last few years. And in fact, this year, there were very few flags down there. Uh, whether that's down to do to do with the um, COVID restrictions or not, I'm not quite sure. Um, another place where you find a lot of flags is on uh, bars and um, on the Newton Arch. We've got the Colin Club, as it's known, the Constitution Club, <clears throat> and you'd regularly see a lot of flags there. You can see them on lampposts at the front there, a uh, big Union flag at the front, and then you know a banner about um, a loyalist uh, band attached at the front of it. Um, just to show you there the, the number of flags that there are in, in each route. The Newton Arch Road is obviously the place where uh, most of the flags are. 
Albert Bridge Road, uh, much fewer. Um, some on say the Orange Orange Hall there. Um, quite a few on um, residential properties as well, uh, going along there. Tempmore Avenue, a disproportionate number of flags because that's um, that's an area where you get a lot of orange parades going down. So people both uh, in terms of um, ones on say lampposts, but also people putting them out on on the houses. You get a lot on Tempmore Avenue. So there's a a disproportionate number of flags in, in, in comparison with the actual number of um, houses that there are. <clears throat> Again, um, bannerettes, which I'll come to. Um, one attempt to reduce the number of cheap flags flown on lampposts was the introduction of plastic bannerettes in 2004. These were attached to brackets and were removed at the end of the marching season, i.e. the end of August, to be re reused the following year. Many of these banners were sponsored by organisations like Orange Lodges or individuals, including local politicians, but also families and friends of specific people to commemorate these individuals. For example, there was nearly, there's nearly always been a banner at remembering Valerie Hamilton, located close to the Mount Pottinger Methodist Church on the Albert Bridge Road on the junction with Tentmore Avenue. You can see it there on the, the right hand side. And in fact, there's been uh, two or three different bannerets, but they're always located close to that church. But uh, most of the time, the most common ones over this period would, would have been the ones you see on the left hand side, the sort of image of the Queen on a Union Jack or uh, King Billy crossing the boy on an orange background. These are the most common ones. Um, the the reason why the, um, the Valley ha Valerie Hamilton um, Banneret was there was because, uh, as I was informed, she was associated with that church. The vast majority of these bannerets have featured, as I said, an image of King William, William crossing the Boyne or Queen Elizabeth on a Union flag background, with smaller numbers featuring a Northern Ireland flag, which you can see in the centre there. Bannerets featuring images relating to the First World War. Um, were used uh, 2016 to 28 before returning to the former King Billy and Queen Elizabeth images in the following years. Uh, possibly, those are the ones I'm talking about there, um, the First World War bannerets. Um, possibly the most contentious banneret image appeared in 2005, four bannerets appeared on the Newton Arch Road and featured an image of a masked gunman with the words UVF 1912 to present day, still undefeated. Other brownerettes featured images of Sir Edward Carson in the First World War and were apparently intended to link the present day UVF to the pre-World War I organisation of the same name. However, this UVF banneret did not appear in subsequent years. So it's again, it's sort of like there's a clear uh, link there with the present day UVF, whereas the others are making um, a more uh, obscure connection to the present day UVF to, to the original organization. Despite this attempts to replace flags and bannerets with uh, uh, what has often occurred has been a, a belt and braces situation where flags are flown alongside the bannerets. For example, in 2017, where East Belfast Protestant Boys Band 50th anniversary flags were flown alongside uh, bannerets. It's just to give you a number, an idea of the, the numbers. In that sort of area, the number of plastic bannerets that are uh, on display. Um, you know, those early years, you got you got ones that were more uh, directly connected to the um, present day UVF, i.e. making connections to the First World War. Um, more recently, the numbers have dropped. It's it's more directly the, the sort of traditional, if we can call those, um, call them that, the, 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 the Queen Elizabeth or King Billy ones that are have been on display. So there's been a, a lower number. You've seen it's dropped from about 60 down to about you know, 40 to 50. Um, advances in technology have made it much easier to produce flags for specific events so that, for example, in 2008, we saw the blue Royal Irish Regiment flags flown as part of the RIR homecoming event. Uh, this flag was flown in lampposts, orange halls, unionist party offices, and became something of a pan-unionist symbol. And you can see from the 
the photograph I got there, it's lampposts. Um, you can see it on the um, Ulster Unionist Party offices there, and then the orange wall next door to it. So it's it's kind of like you know all branches of unionism use this this flag. Twenty twelve uh, saw the display of flies marking marking the Queen's Diamond Jubilee and the centenary of the Ulster Covenant. And again, you can see this this tells you how easily these uh, different patterns can be produced. You've got the version of the um, the orange standard. You've got just one that the Union flag says Ulster Covenant, 1912, 2012. You've got um, an image of the Queen on the Royal Standard, and then you've got this interesting one with obviously a, a child's drawing, uh, or, which has been superimposed on uh, the Union flag. And again, it refers to the, the Queen's uh, Diamond Jubilee. 2013, we had a flag specifically created for the uh, UVF centenary, and the, you, you can see again, you know, the, the range of flags in the uh, parade that took place that uh, these, these flags were put up to, to cover that area. Uh, 2016, we had uh, sub-centenary flags as, as well as Northern Ireland football flags marking Northern Ireland's participation in the European Nations football championship finals that year. <clears throat> And some flags even made a link between the two um, as the football finals were coincidentally played in France that year. Um, there's one, if you look in the bottom right hand side there, has got the Northern Ireland football emblem and then you can see uh, images of um, First World War Memorial in the background with the, the message off, off to France, our boys were sent, uh, we will remember them. I'm not sure that it's particularly, I would agree with the, the taste. Uh, but it shows you that they're linking those two uh, things together. And then you've got the sort of um, Loyalist uh, Council flag on the left-hand side, which became again widely used in Loyalist areas, and the specific East Belfast UVF one, the, the brown one underneath it. Uh, 2017, 13 East Belfast Protestant Boys 50th anniversary flags were displayed to mark the band's formation in 1967. Uh, somewhat surprisingly, 25 of these flags were flown the following year and three in 2019, which per perhaps tells you something about the life cycle of specific flag designs, i.e. they get a batch in and it seems to last about three years before they're, they're exhausted. Uh, in 2019, several banners and Christian flags were displayed at Cluan Place and nearby on the Albert Bridge Road to commemorate and to protest against the murder of local man Ian Ogle by members of the UVF in January that year. In 2020, in the midst of the COVID pandemic, there were fewer flags on display. Uh, but these included nine union flags bearing the message, thank you NHS. One saw a range of flag designs commemorating the centenary of Northern Ireland, and I counted eight separate flag designs in this area alone, and another on the Beersbridge Road, uh, and there were undoubtedly, undoubtedly many more elsewhere, which again, you know, shows you how easy it is to create these, these patterns. I don't intend to get into the details of the political controversy of the flags dispute, which erupted in late 2012. So, suffice to say that the decision taken by Belfast City Council to reduce the number of days and locations in which the Union flag was flown on council buildings was not well received by unionists and loyalists. Unionists particularly blamed the Alliance Party for supporting this decision, although Alliance argued that they took the most sensible approach in what was a difficult situation. Nevertheless, the decision sparked protests and violence that continued well into the new year with an impact on how flags were displayed on the streets. In 2012, the number of flags on display had declined. Uh, that summer, it declined to 125 compared to 132 the previous year. In December 2012, flags were erected in protest against the council decision. And on the 31st of December 2012, there were 114 flags uh, on three routes. Of these, 107 were Union flags and two were Northern Ireland flags. So it was clear what the protest was about. In connection with the UVF, uh, centenary commemoration flags were erected 
on Sunday 14th of April 2013 along a parade route which included Templemore Avenue and parts of the Newton Arge Road. A significant number of union flags were still on display and in some instances two flags were displayed on the same lamppost. The lower, of the, uh, the lower on the lamppost were, were erected in connection with the flag protest and those higher up with the UVF centenary parade. Just me showing off with all my figures. Um, a specific UVF centenary flag, which I showed you earlier, uh, featuring images of Sir Edward Carson, James Craig and Fred Crawford on a purple standard UVF flag were prominent along the parade route. These had been commissioned by the body organising the parade and were available to buy in Loyal's shops for £10 each. On the Newton Arch Road, no UVF centenary flags were displayed below Templemore Avenue, as this was not part of the parade route, and this thus avoided the uh, short strand interface. Some flags were removed on Thursday, the 25th of April, but most were left in place. By the 22nd of April, 2013, 140 flags were on display. 92 were Union or Northern Ireland, 87 Union and five Northern Ireland. There were also 42 UVF centenary flags, two UVF flags, i.e. purple standard, two YCV, one 36 Ulster Division and one Australian national flag. So I don't know how that got there. Um, by July 2013, there were 197 flags on display on the three main thoroughfares, the largest number in the 21st century at that time. The increase was clearly the result of the ongoing loyalist antagonism over the Belfast City Council flag decision and the fact that many UVF centenary flags remained in place. All three routes showed an increase in the number of flags. Of the 197 on display, 142 were either Union, 116 of those, or Northern Ireland flags, 26. There were 37 UVF related flags, uh, 32 UVF centenary flags among them, and three UDA flags. By November 2013, almost all of these flags were still on display, unlike in previous years when they'd been removed around September. By the 9th of December, flags and lampposts in some areas of East Belfast, for example, the Belmont Road, Hollywood Road and the Upper Newton Arge Road, were removed and Christmas lights put up. And Presumably, cherry pickers had been used to do both at the same time. However, flags in the Newton Arge Road were left in place. A small number of flags in the Albert Bridge Road and Templemore Avenue were also left up. By the 14th of January 2014, most of the 2012-13 flags were remaining. Uh, flags remaining on the Newton Arch Road have been removed. There were two Union flags on lampposts, one Union flag at a memorial, one UVF flag at a lamppost, one UVF on a, a flagpole at a mural, and a, a YCV on a flagpole at a mural were still left up, so that's six in total. Uh, by the 9th of May, new Union flags were on lampposts on the Albert Bridge Road and on the Upper Newton Arch Road. And over the weekend of the 70th of June, Union and Northern Ireland flags were put up on lampposts on the Newton Arge Road. Bannerets were also erected over the weekend of 28th, 29th June in advance of the Somme Parade on the 1st of July. The number of flags in July 2014 remained similar to the previous year uh, at 195, i.e. two down in the previous year. Union and Northern Ireland flags counted for 151 of these. There were 13 UVF related flags and four UDA related flags. The decline in UVF flag numbers was largely due to the disappearance of UVF centenary flags. In 2015, the number of flags declined to 164 from 195. This may have been due to the fact that tensions are, uh, surrounding the uh, flags dispute of the previous years at ease somewhat. However, the number of flags on display was still higher than they'd been before the flags protest began. There were fewer Scottish flags on display this year than the previous year, 12 down to six. And many of those flown were part of the flags of the UK display, i.e. with Union, Northern Ireland, and sometimes Wales and England flags. But these were rarely flown individually, as would have been more common in previous years. Uh, the pro-independence policy of the Scottish National Party may well have been a factor in this decline. And by 20, 2020 and 2021, only three Scottish saltires were on display. 2016 was dominated by two major centenaries, the Easter Rising and the Battle of the Somme. Flags were put up on the Newton Arge Road on the 6th of June. Uh, some flags were removed uh, on the weekend of 1st and 2nd of October. However, the green Somme centenary flag and East Belfast Somme centenary flag, among others, were left up. In July 2016, 201 flags were on display on the three thoroughfares, the greatest number during the period. Union and Northern Ireland flags counted for only 78 of the flags, the lowest number since 2007. 
There were 11 paramilitary flags on display, seven UVF related and four UDA. This was a, there was also an interesting change in the type of UVF related flag on display, red hand commando flags disappearing completely while YCV flags with the connection to the First World War were five of the seven UVF flags on display. There were 74 Somme centenary flags while another 10 flags commemorated the 36th Ulster <coughs> Division. Against the background of the Brexit campaign, one bar also displayed a European Union flag, but with the word out in the centre. Between 2017 and 2019, the number of flags on display declined slightly from 196 to 186 and then to 185. 2020 was dominated by the fallout from the coronavirus pandemic. Many traditional commemorations were cancelled, and these included the 1st of July Somme commemoration parade and the 12th parades. Nevertheless, flags did appear in many of the usual locations. Union flags bearing the, word, were the words, thank you, NHS, were erected in lampposts on the Newton Orange Road over the weekend of 30, 31st May. However, these were noticeably lower on the lamppost than the usual flags. And large nine by six foot Union and Ulster banner flags were erected on the same lampposts the following weekend, while many of the other usual points uh, were where flags were flown. Uh, also had flags on display by this time. In Tampenmore Avenue, many houses were also decorated with flags and bunting in early July, but plastic bannerets were not erected until mid-June. Interestingly, bunting was not strong across the Newton Hard Road as it had been in previous years, and the use of larger Union and Northern Ireland flags may have been a substitute for this. Intriguingly, a Belgian national flag, which had flown on a pole in Tampenmore Avenue, had been removed by 14th of July. So uh, I don't know if somebody in Belgium had caused offence. As in uh, previous years, in the early months of 2021 were dominated by the fallout from COVID-19. The vaccination program had been proven successful, however, so that by the spring of 2021, there was much talk of things possibly returning to normal in the summer, and this included parades and other commemorations. A number of significant factors were at play in 2021. Unionist anger over the fallout from Brexit and the Northern Ireland Protocol, continuing discontent over the non-prosecution of Sinn Féin members who participated in the Bobby Story funeral and commemoration of the centenary of Northern Ireland. As well as this, there was continuing tension between the local UVF based around Pitt Park and the PSNI, as well as uh, the outworking of the UVF murder of Ian Ogle. Somewhat surprisingly, there were no UDA flags marking the 50th anniversary of the creation of that organisation. Flags had already begun appearing on houses, bars and lampposts in early March following the success of Glasgow Rangers in winning the Scottish Football Premiership, and by May, Northern Ireland centenary flags were also appearing. Indeed, Glasgow Ranger, Rangers flags proved to be some of the most popular sellers of the year at the Union Jack shop on the Newton Arge Road. By mid-May, red, white and blue bonding had been strung across part of the Newton Arge Road at the Constitutional Club, uh, and this was almost certainly associated with Glasgow Rangers Scottish Premiership win. More flags appeared along the Newton Arge Road over the weekend of 22nd, 23rd May, and as in the previous year, there was no bunting across the Newton Arge Road in July, but larger nine by six foot Union and Ulster banner flags were flown on lampposts along the, the road. There were numerous new flag designs for the Northern Ireland centenary on display. Along, uh, among these were a blue flag uh, designed by the Loyalist Communities Council and a similar blue flag with orange lilies produced by number six district of the Orange Order in uh, East Belfast. A revised version of an older uh, Northern Ireland flag design was also reproduced with 100 in the top left corner. The Orange Order also produced its own centenary flag, which uh, was more prominent than the usual orange standard this year. Overall, Northern Ireland centenary commemoration flags accounted for 39 of the 179 flags on the three main thoroughfares. No UDA flags were on display this year. Uh, and those which would normally be flown at murals on the Newton Arge Road were replaced by, by uh, LCC Blue Centenary flags and by a B Specials commemorative flag. So um, just to take an overview, um, the period began in 2001 with an upsurge in the displaying of UDA and UVF related flags as part of the outworking of the UDA UVF feud, which occurred in 2000. By 2004, when I began my survey, displays of overtly paramilitary flags had declined dramatically. Throughout the period, the Union flag remained the most numerous flag on display. The greatest number appeared in 2013, uh, 116, in the middle of the flag dispute with Belfast City Council. 
And almost every other year, the Northern Ireland flag was most common, except in 2013, when there were a greater number of UVF flags. And of course, that was the centenary of the UVF. The total number of flags in the three main thoroughfares ranged between 116 in 2006 and 201 in 2016. The number of type and number and type of flag on display was influenced by political events, by historical commemorations and the lesser extent sporting achievements. Commemorations saw an upsurge uh, in UVF flags in 2013, the Battle of the Somme centenary in 2016, East Belfast Protestant boys flags in 2017, while flags were also left up longer in 2018 at the time of the centenary uh, of the ending of the First World War. Sporting achievements such as Northern Ireland's qualification for the European Nations competition finals in 2016 were also a factor. Political and security events were also important. In this regard, the flags dispute which began in December 2016 was a significant factor in the increase in the number of flags flown in 2013, which, as I mentioned, was the centenary of the UVF. The increase in the number of UVF flags in 2019, uh, most saying UVF East Belfast Battalion, was also probably linked to the murder of Ian Ogle and criticism of the local UVF earlier in the year. Uh, there were comparatively few King William, Orange Order and Battle of the Boyne flags flown. And this might be interpreted as an indication, as Dominic Bryan has pointed out, of a change away from commemorating the Battle of the Boyne to the Somme and the First World War and to events associated with the more recent troubles. 2020 saw a decline in the number of flags on display, down 15% in the previous year. And this was undoubtedly driven by the COVID-19 lockdown, although some side streets showed an increase in the number of flags on display. 2021 saw an increase in the number of flags, partly driven by flags commemorating the centenary of the creation of Northern Ireland, although 2021 was also the 50th anniversary of the, the UDA. Uh, there were no UDA flags on display on the, on the main thoroughfares I sur surveyed. So although these figures tell us something about what has happened with flag displays on three main thoroughfares in a loyalist area of Inner East Belfast, there are also limitations. Count was taken at a time when the greatest number of flags would normally be on display, but not apart from the years of the flags dispute, how this compares with other times of the year. Nor does it tell us what's happening outside of this area and how representative, representative it is of other loyalist areas in Belfast or elsewhere. But in the meantime, I think these figures at least give us some hard facts to back up speculation about flags displays. And there's my uh, accumulated figures. Uh, the most interesting one's probably the lamppost thing. Um, it's it's the, the the most contentious one in terms of where flags are displayed. Um, so to return to the question of post in the title, are these the flags of our fathers, or at least those of the loyalist area around the Newton Arch Road, Albert Bridge Road, and Teltmore Avenue? What's changed and what has remained the same over the course of 20 years? Some of the flags on display, such as the Union and Northern Ireland flags, may be seen as traditional, but many are new flag designs uh, drawn on British military themes or Unionist and Loyalist traditions and iconography. Technological changes have played a significant part in much of this by providing cheaper flags and a wider range of easily produced designs. In some ways, therefore, it's impossible to compare today's situation with that which existed 30 or 40 years ago before this technology was available. There's also been a tendency to leave flags up uh, for longer. Uh, again, this is partly driven by the fact that the flags are relatively cheap, meaning that the flags and lampposts are used only once, and there's little financial incentive to take them down and reuse them. It's possible that at least part of the change in how long flags are flown predates the period covered by the survey, but it would require further research to attempt to verify that fact. Nevertheless, we can say that in the earlier years of the survey, 2004 to 2012, flags in the Newton Arge Road were removed between 10th of September and the 16th of October, but that since 2015, it has ranged from 4th of October to 28th of November, so that's, that's, that's longer. Um, so just to conclude then, um, there is perhaps an element of the philosophical conundrum of the ship of Theseus about this, i.e., you know, does a thing change so much that uh, bit by bit that it becomes a totally different animal? In some ways, part of the commemoration has changed while other parts have remained the same. Nevertheless, we're some way off the situation where the changes 
that have occurred in relation to this displaying of flags at the 12th makes it a completely different event from what occurred in the 20th century. In many ways, uh, it's in the very nature of celebrations and commemoration to change and mutate over time anyway. So I'll just leave you with that and um, I'm, I'm willing to take any any questions you might have on all of those facts and figures. That's great, Gordon. Thank you very much uh, for that um, <laughs> very heavily illustrated uh, presentation. Uh, let's just go back to Teams. Yeah, and uh, stop presenting. Stop sharing. Okay, great. So, um, We've got some time for, for questions. Now, just to, to remind everyone that uh, Gordon was not a member of the Commission on, on Flags and Cultural Traditions, uh, which reported earlier this week. So um, you, you can't answer any specific questions yeah. relating to the Commission and its report. Um, but I'm sure there are, there are lots of other questions uh, relating to, to emblems and flags, symbolism. Uh, so we'll open it up. Um, if you want to ask a question and you're joining us through Teams, you just need to press the little uh, icon button with the hand on it, and that'll just indicate that you um, you want to put a question uh, to us. So uh, anyone want to start? Liam. Yeah, Liam. Thanks, Gordon. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I'll just say uh, the heart sinks seeing all of these flags over such a long period of time. And it seems to me there are kind of three scenes that explaining the different levels of different moments in time, the um, commemoration historically, um, competition between paramilitary groups and um, contemporary crisis, whatever mm -hmm. they might be. Um, but it, going beyond East Belfast to, to the west of the city as well, the process is unfair. Isn't one of the striking um, striking things of the last few decades that tricolours have largely disappeared, um, let's say from the west of the city, outside of dissident, dissident IRA, IRA neighbourhoods. Um, whereas on, on the loyalist side, it's, it's a very different story. Mm -hmm. Do you have any well, observations? The, the one thing I, 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 I did notice this year, because I was trying to something, hopefully I can get Dominic involved in um, was looking at uh, how commemorations and symbolism um, changed during the lockdown. And I happened to be up um, the Falls Road for a medical appointment. Uh, so inevitably you take your camera with you just to take whatever photographs there. And one thing that struck me was, you know, given that this was the 40th anniversary of hunger strikes, how little there was uh, shown that, and they, what was there was uh, the hunger strikers who died from the INLA, not from the provisionals. So you got the, I don't know if you could say traditional sort of photograph of the, the hunger striker who had died with a black flag on the lamppost, uh, but it was just the three INLA members, not uh, provisional members, and I thought that was, that was quite striking. Um, uh, what was your other your other point, Liam? Well, it, it's why, in a way, the Republican community communities doesn't feel the need to express itself yeah. through the medium of flags. But they think it, we did in the past, in the 1990s, West Belfast was tricolour city yeah. during election times. Yeah. But as you know, a lot of this is is is, is um, intra community rather than inter community. So, you know, the very as far as I can see, um, this this really did start with the sort of UVF UDA feud and they discovered that they could get flags made pretty cheaply. And you know, you can cover, you get a hundred flags, you know, say you pin, you know, they can sell them at 10 pounds. So they're they're buying them at much less than that. So you know, for a few thousand quid, you can cover a large area. Um, the only the only problem is with um, sometimes you know when they they come from Taiwan they don't always exactly work out. I mean this is a revised version of one that was done earlier. I don't know if you can see it. Um, um, it was there was a I can't remember what it was, but there was a, a, a 
you know, you've got um, the Crown, you've got King Philly crossing the Boyne, an Orange March, and I forget what the other thing was uh, in the corner, but they've, they're reprinted. If you look, if you, I don't know if you can see, um, it says actually, instead of what I assume should have been corner shop, it says comfort shop, C-O-M-F-E-R. So I always refer to this as the comfort shop flag. Um, and I think that's that's the problem with, um, you know, they, they're getting them made in Taiwan and they just, you know, the design's being scrawled. Uh, being sent off, they're being made in sort of 500, 800 at a time, um, and then, um, you know, being sent back. But, you know, um, you know, quite flimsy. They're obviously not designed to last a long time, but, you know, they can, they can, they can be, you know, redesigned, you know, the last for a couple of years, and that's it. I mean, I think that's going to be one of the, you know, reading through, again, you know, I, I, have nothing to do with the FICT report, but you know one of the issues that might come up is you know how do you design, how do you are you going to decide what you know what's an acceptable flag and what is not because it's so easy to kind of blur the edges. You know, I was pointing out there, say YCV. You know, I mean, the the UVF claim that the 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 orange standard is a historic flag, um, and I think most of it go mm, not sure about that one. But the YCV one, I think, is is a much grayer area, and then you get down into things like Battle of the Somme, um, you know, the thirty sixth Ulster Division. Um, a lot of those are being put up by people connected with the UVF, but you know, they're they're clearly designed to to have a, a broader appeal to um, a much bigger part of the Protestant Unionist loyalist community. Uh, you know, so you know, there's it's. It's it's very difficult thing to say. You know what's what's a legal flag, what's an illegal flag, what's a paramilitary flag, what's not a paramilitary flag, because there are all these gradations of, you know, what is what is more clearly paramilitary and what is just you know more clearly connected with Protestant Unionist loyalist culture and tr tradition. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, Sean. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean. Going back to one, Liam's question, one obvious explanation for the contrast in the Republic and the Royalist areas would be that one side has a shock concerning the other with international opinion. Images of Nelson, Nelson Mandela play much better on the international stage than images of uh, men in Balak Lapis. And that leads on to the question I want to ask, which is about the decision making behind all this. I mean, are we talking about some sort of centralised decision making? You know, these are the flags that are going up this year. Or are we just looking at conglomeration of local initiatives? I, I think a bit of both, Sean. Again, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to say, give me a grant and I'll find that out for you. You know, <laughs> um, you know, my 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 in-depth source source is usually talking to people in the union jack shop about what um, what's been selling and what you get, and you know, you pick up bits of information. But you know, there's a difference between say. Um, you know that that one would have been done. The one that I showed you would have been done more probably from um, you know the, the shops and things like that. Whereas um, you've got you know the other two that have brought along. You've got um, this one was produced by the Loyalist Communities Council uh, for the Northern Ireland Centenary. Um, similar to the the Green Battle of the Somme one. You know, so there's a more centralised. Um, thing going on here, you know, that someone sat down and designed this flag and said, right, this is going to be representing the sort of broadly PUL community. Um, and then you get sort of more specialist ones like um, the sort of East, ba East Belfast Orange Order, um, you know, which was the number six district was this was produced you know, by the sort of East Belfast Orange Order. Um, and I think if you feel, you know, the the the, the work of um, a vexillologist, uh, a vexillological enumerator or flag counter is not an easy one. If you look at, you know, look at how close those two flags look, trying to, uh, you know, which is, which is the LCC one and which is the um, East Belfast Orange Order. It's sometimes difficult. When it's you know, especially if it happens to be raining and the flags wrapped around a lamppost, um, it's not always easy to work out exactly what's what. But um, I, I think that you know, it, it's a combination of of all of those things. There are ones that are more kind of centrally planned, like say uh, the, the the modified um, 
Orange Standard this year or that Loyalist Communities Council one. But equally, there's there's other ones like that, um, the, the kind of comfort shop one, as I call it, you know, Northern Ireland Centenary one, which I think's probably been, you know, a, a lot of the Union Jack shops have got together and said, you know, order us 500 or 800 of those um, and then they sell them. You know, and sometimes it's a case of, you know, you go into the shop and you see what what they've got coming in and, you know, a month down the line that that's what's going to be on on the lamppost. You know, I'm not suggesting that, you know, that the, the flag place go in and raid. Um, um, I was checking with the German, I said, was it Fanon Polizei? It would be in German flag police, you know, I just think it sounds better and more dramatic. Um, but it's just the idea of that, there, you know, there'd be some sort of um, PSNA flags department where you go in and raid the, the union, um, the union jack shops kind of appeals to me. I, there's a there's a novel in there somewhere. I'll put you in charge of a setup. Oh, Sophie. no, thank you. Sophie. Uh, I've got two questions. One is just a logistics Uh, no, it's again, it's a, it's a sort of, um, I think it's kind of like um, going back to 2004 when it started, you know, the year I started kind of just happened to be the same year that these bannerets appeared and it was kind of trying to get away from the paramilitary flag. So there was a lot of buy-in. If you looked at the names that were going up, it was like local MPs, local councillors and all the rest of them were sponsoring these things as well as the Orange Lodges and things like that, but it, it was kind of, I think they, you know, was it East Belfast Historical and Cultural Society, which would have been, I think, UVF, UDA and, and those sort of guys. But it was, the idea was to get you away, get away from the paramilitary flags and to some extent, and I, again, because I hadn't done it in 2002 and 2003, whether that change had already taken place by that time, I don't know. Um, but what has happened is, as I said, it's become a belt and braces situation where the bannerets go up and then, um, you know, you get, you know, a flag on top of it. Like, you know, a few years ago, the East Belfast Protestant Boys uh, Band uh, would have gone up. Um, you know, you, I've noticed around, if you go down Sandy Row, you get you get similar ones down there as well. Uh, and I think the same thing has happened. Um, Personally, I, I think it does look better and, you know, they are taken down um, and a lot of times they re are reused, but they seem to have a, you know, the, the, the life cycle of those seems to be about four or five years as well before they're burned out or worn out and they're replaced by, by, by new ones, um, which means that, say, you know, those ones that were put up relating to the First World War um, went up about 2016 and they were used for 2017, 2018. And then they were taken down and replaced with the kind of more standard um, Queen Elizabeth and King Billy ones again. And um, um, I was just wondering, you said that it was mainly Union uh, flags and Northern Ireland flags. How do they, um, the flags and the bannerets, match up to the kind of removing banners, which I presume are a lot more expensive to make and have a lot longer kind of life? You, know, you mean the orange bannerets? You mean the... Yeah, like the, the ones what? that are actually used in the parades. Are they mainly kind of William III? Oh, I mean, there's there's something you should ask Dom about. Um, no, they're all they're they're um, all sorts of things. I mean, Peter, you'd know. Well, I suppose you've got to distinguish between the Orange Order banners and then the 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 band banners as well, because uh -huh. they're yeah. obviously Which, quite distinct, aren't they? Uh, I mean, my recollection is when I was a kid, it was just the the Orange uh, the Orange Lodge banners. Um, you know, and over recent years, there's been all this thing about you know you um, girls or boys marching in front of the, the bands and they having their own uh, banners and flags as well. That's not something I remember as a kid. I mean, that to me only seems to be over the last maybe decade, 20 years maybe at the most. Okay. So uh, they wouldn't be like waving union flags and uh, like flags? Um, not generally not as far as I can. I mean, there was that um, um, UVS centenary flag, uh, parade where I, I showed you where they, they had a lot of the kind of local UVF um, regimental flags or copies of them. Uh, but generally, no, that's not something that I 
recall it's more you think of it in terms of more of the orange bannerettes because they're so much bigger yeah so i was just thinking you know about the prices thing it seems like if there's already been flag being hung everywhere and then you you know you're already in that kind of landscape mm -hmm. when you get a large print yeah, but that's a, it's a much more specialised. I mean, those those bannerets, as far as I know, are, are, are really expensive and it's a specialist job, you know, so they have to take care of them. I mean, the one thing, um, uh, there's a, a comedy film called The Most Fertile Man in, in Ireland, uh, where the guy who's a Catholic guy takes his Protestant girlfriend and she wants to go to the 11th night uh, bonfires and... Um, You've got the orange logs beside the bonfires with all the banners out. Dom, you know, nearly explodes when he sees this because you know the idea of having these expensive banners next to the the bonfires, you know, and, and risking them, you know, getting damaged or even catching fire is just ludicrous. Okay, thanks. So, if we just a reminder to people who are joining us online, you can ask questions as well. You just need to click the the hand icon, and uh, I'll just indicate you want to ask a question. Okay. I might uh, ask one. Oh, sorry. Uh, Rachel, at back. Yeah. Sorry, yes, I have, I have way, way more. more. <laughs> much more effective than what we are on Microsoft Teams. And I wanted to ask you about it being an intro kind of community conference. Do you have, and you might not know because you said you're counting kind of at the beginning of the season. And is there a specific theme or topic that doesn't make it through the season, right? Because I would imagine how you said that with the technological advances that it's much easier for every group that wants to, to kind of get together and make their own design and then put their own flag up. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that becomes like it's too, if that topic is too much and the rest of the community doesn't, it doesn't make it through kind of the marching season or does everyone just kind of throw their hands up and say, we don't like it, but we'll let it stay? No, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, they, you know, uh, that area used to be strongly UDA and over the years it's become more UVF. Uh, but you've still got, you know, the the murals that are at the junction of Chantmore Avenue and the Newton Arch Road is still kind of UDA territory. Whereas a lot of the other stuff has been commandeered by the UVF. But in terms of uh, stuff being taken down, um, I don't think in a, in, a, in a given year, I can't think of any examples of stuff being taken down. Um, the As I said, the, the thing I noticed was that um, UVF bannerette that went up in, was it 2004, 2005, and only appeared in that one year. Um, I think because it was just, you know, I mean, the police might have actually taken action against those and removed them because it was clearly showing support for a, a, a present day prescribed organization, where the other ones are kind of, you know, a nod and a wink, um, but it's not is clear that it is actually, you know, the modern day UVF that, that is saying this. But and the only other one I could think of personally that was controversial was I remember in the early years saying um, a UDA flag which had put up been put up on the side of a church. And I think it was taken down. Now, it was a few weeks before it was taken down, but I think it was, you know, so uh, you might get flags flying, you know, in, on the road in front of a church, but not on the actual church itself. Um, and that's the only one I can think of where, you know, something was taken down because it was seen as being inappropriate. Um, but uh, no, generally speaking, when, when they go up there, they're up there until uh, most of them, most of them are taken down. And um, I mean, again, there's, there's not, they come down in, in, in bits and pieces, but I usually go for when most of them come down on the Newton Arch Road, and it's usually kind of like, um, you know, it's done over a weekend, you know, it's done over the Saturday, Sunday, so I would go down on the Monday and, and see whether they're still there or not. Um, but it's kind of like, you know, once they go up, uh, and, it, you know, in the early years, it used, you could nearly set your watch pad. It was about the second week in June when the, the, the flags went up. Um, uh, over the years then, since then, it's it's varied a wee bit more and it, it's been noticeable though that, you know, post um, flags dispute, they've stayed up longer. Uh, you know, that's the one thing that, I mean, in the report, in the FICT report, I noticed 
it didn't really were a bit short in terms of empirical empirical evidence. The only thing that they, they had was um, the Northern Ireland Life and Times survey, which is a much more impressionistic thing. You know, do you are you offended by flags, murals, whatever? Um, but in terms of hard evidence, you know, there wasn't anything. So, um, you know, they made this they they made the statement that flags stayed up longer uh, post flags dispute than, than was the case, you know, 2012 and earlier. And my, the figures that I came up with actually supports that. Um, but again, you know, with, within that narrow area that I've been, been saying. So um, they didn't provide any empirical evidence to support that assertion. But, you know, judging by what I find, it is actually um, probably correct. OK. Um... Well, we do have a question online. Uh, Karen, uh, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes, sorry. Um, I was just going to, I was just asking about um, the, again, about the, the, the tricolour on the Falls Road side. I've just been studying the Shankill Falls Divide and I've been reading files from 1972. Um, and I know back then it seems as though uh, it was illegal to have a tricolour. I think there was a shop or something on the Falls Road that had a tricolour in it. Um, I, I don't just one, was wondering if you know when it became, is it with the Good Friday Agreement that it became possible to put up those Irish flags or was there an earlier date when they were allowed or? Um, I'm trying to think it was, well, you had the Flags and Emblems Act, which was repealed. When was that? Do you remember, Sean? Um, mm. It's basically the Flags and Emblems Act, 50, was it 54? Um, it, it didn't, it, people say it banned the trickler. It didn't actually do that. What it did was it gave a special protection to the Union flag so that you could basically do a bit of coat trailing and you know you could carry a union flag anywhere and the police couldn't intervene um but um you know if you if you put any other um symbol up which is effectively was mostly was likely going to be a trickler which could lead to a breach of the peace then uh, the police were um had to intervene and that's what led to the um the Devil street riots in 1965 wasn't it 65 um 64. Um, so I, I, I'm trying to remember, can't think of hand when the Flags and Emblems Act was repealed. Um, but it was never it was never a case where it was illegal to fly uh, uh, the trickler. And if you look at, you know, you, you see sort of like um, GAA events or you'll see um, St. Patrick's Day parades, you know, if it's it's within a Catholic area or a nationalist area or a Republican area, it, Mostly, the the police didn't intervene. Uh, it was only when it moved outside that area that they, they would intervene. So, once again, it's a grey area. But it was basically whenever I can't remember offhand which year it was repealed, but whenever the Flags and Emblems Act was repealed, which which gave special protection to the, the Union flag, um, <clears throat> you know that would have been that would have been a sea change moment. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Karen. Um, Okay, I might ask a question, Gordon, if that's okay. So this is again, this is impressionistic uh, again, but um, my my memory, my recollection, you know, going back to when I was a child, was that you know, in, in Protestant working class areas, every house, every terraced house would have its its flag jack, and most of them would be used um, during uh, the twelfth fortnight. Uh, flags would be flown from from individual houses. You, you mentioned that briefly earlier on. Was that that seems to have declined significantly mm -hmm. uh, in more recent decades with the uh, with the exception of a number of of, of um, perhaps suspiciously uniformly decorated streets in some in yeah. some localities yeah. um, which kind of raised questions about uh, about what might be behind that uh, but, but what what's your kind of um, your survey over the last 18 years what how what is it flagged in terms of Use that pun. Uh, I think, <laughs> in terms of it, it flying flags from individual. I houses. did do. I did do. Um, I did fifteen side streets as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, again, the like places like Mc, McMaster Street, Lendrick Street, I, basically the ones that that uh, Kate Farron had done. I I replicated it and I've done it every every year. And <clears throat> I probably wouldn't tell you any, anything, except as an amount. You know, when you accumulate the thing, you might you might find something interesting. But I noticed that, um, say, McMaster Street, which is uh, a street, you know, it's an old style terrace one. They use it a lot for, for making movies. 
um, but it would be one that would be well decorated. Um, but I mean, I, I you know, uh, just uh, as a story, I mean, uh, an aunt of mine who lives in uh, Hornby Street, you know, uh, you'd have gone down there and you'd have seen, you know, a lot of the flags out there every year. And then, you know, one year went down and um, you know, there was hardly anything there. And, you know, what what, what happened to oh, the guy who used to put the flags up moved out of the street. You know? So I think it is a case, at least to some extent, that it would be like one or two individuals who'd take it upon themselves to put stuff on lampposts and, and things like that. But again, you know, this is, you know, to some extent supposition based on years of following the thing. Um, see my earlier answer, you know, if you want to give me a big grant to go and research this properly. Well, we'll see what we can do, Gordon. Uh, okay, do we have any other questions, uh, either online or in, in person? No. Okay, thanks very much, uh, everyone. So uh, it seems, um, uh, apart from anything else, we, we need to find a way of, of kind of effectively recycling all these flags that get discarded uh, every year, which presumably end up um, in, in landfills. It used to be a bit of a, an environmental issue, apart from anything else. Um, if I can ask uh, everyone who's still with us to maybe um, uh, thank Gordon in the traditional way, by giving, giving him a round of applause. Uh, 